For many years, Ball State University has partnered with IU Health Ball Memorial Hospital to improve the health of our friends and our neighbors. To learn more about the hospital's cardiopulmonary rehabilitation program and how it benefits both hospital patients and our students. That's next on Cardinal Compass, Campus and Community Conversations. From the campus of Ball State University on Ball State PBS and Indiana Public Radio, this is Cardinal Compass, Campus and Community Conversations. At Ball State University, our promise is simple, to empower the success of our students. Our students benefit from immersive learning, innovative academic programs, and state-of-the-art facilities. Ball State offers a distinctive yet affordable educational experience and the ideal environment to prepare for a fulfilling career and a meaningful life. We inspire Cardinals to transform their communities, to revolutionize their industries, and to make a difference. We fly. Are you ready to fly? Hello and welcome to Cardinal Compass. I'm Colin Morith. And I'm Oliver Monster. Ball State prides itself on its connections with various community partners. And those partnerships prepare students for many different career paths. Darren Cobb reports how some Cardinals are feeling the pulse of jobs in healthcare. IU Health Ball Memorial Hospital's award-winning cardiopulmonary rehabilitation program has made a lasting impact on all of the students and patients who have passed through it. Check in with them, we motivate them, and hopefully after the couple, couple weeks there, uh, we hope to kind of get them back up and moving through exercise. The program assists patients who have dealt with heart attacks, valve replacements, and open heart surgeries, among other things. It prepares students for the fast-paced work environment, which provides something new each day. It's really developed my, my personal skills, um, my confidence, and just meeting with people and conducting myself in a professional like healthcare environment. And it really just, it pushes your limits, but in, in, a, in a healthy way, in a, in a good way. Buck is passionate about healthcare and providing services that benefit someone's overall health. But for him, it always comes down to one thing. I think I'm a very rich person, but not monetarily, but because of the lives that I touch, or at least I try to touch every day. And so, yeah, I don't know, I, I find worth and I find fulfillment in helping other people. Um, when, I, when I go to bed, I usually have a grin on my face. Hull describes that her favorite aspect of healthcare is watching her patients grow, noticing the differences from when they first come into her care to when they are done. It's cool to see that progression and um, just knowing that I was someone that was able to help them through that process. Darren Cobb, Cardinal Compass. Joining us now is Tanya Scalen, Senior Lecturer of Exercise Science. Tanya, thank you for joining us. You're welcome. Can you give us a, a brief overview of the program and what resources the university has provided to uh, get it off the ground? So actually, the cardiopulmonary rehab internship program started prior to me being here at Ball State University. It started back in the I believe it's the early 90s somewhere when the exercise science program began and they said we need to immerse students into the curriculum more and give them that you know hands-on opportunity so it started before i was here um, during my graduate work i had a required internship as well and so i chose to go to ball memorial hospital and cardiopulmonary rehab and work with the current director katrina riggan at that time too so um, I have the experience that my students now get to experience at Ball Memorial Hospital because I was in their shoes one time. And at that time of being there with them, being with the team, and it has changed over the years, Katrina has been there the whole time, um, I saw how they wanted to teach students, mentor them, um, put them right into the experience. And so as an intern, I saw that. I actually helped bring Ball State students in and I scheduled them to get the, all of those experiences. And then as the time went on, it was kind of funny. You always look back and you know things always come back in a circle. And it was really neat because then I got the opportunity in 2003 to be the internship coordinator with the exercise science program. And I knew we had to have this relationship with Ball. We had to keep it going and we needed to place students in cardiopulmonary rehab just because of what they do with the students there. So I didn't start it, but when I came into the position, I knew they were the place that we needed to send students to, so. 
Now, beyond just getting students involved with this sort of work, what was the main inspiration behind this program? So uh, exercise science students, when they come in to our major, they can go many directions. And a lot of times they don't understand what cardiopulmonary rehab is or what clinical exercise physiology is. And these are like degrees or pathways that people can go and work with an exercise science degree as an undergraduate student. Uh, there are positions that they can move and they can get a graduate degree and work at higher levels in cardiopulmonary rehab. But what's neat is that you can work as an undergraduate student in cardiopulmonary rehab. You can do stress testing with them as well with an undergraduate degree. So it's really important for students to uh, go into a, a venue or a place like the cardiopulmonary rehab unit at Ball Memorial, knowing that once I graduate from Ball State, I can go and I can work here if I don't want to continue school. But if I do want to continue school, there's that mobility to move up in leadership roles as well. So I feel it's really important for those students to know that if I want to continue my education, I can. But if I need to just slide into a job right after I'm done, it's a great path for me. And you can move throughout the whole hospital unit with the degree. Now, President Mearns, what kind of hand did the university have in helping this program get started up? Well, the university, as you know, has had a long-standing relationship with Ball Memorial, even before Ball Memorial became associated with the IU Health System. And so there are many programs that we have where our faculty support uh, programs in the hospital or where we, where we place students as interns. Some of those programs have been going on for many, many years, like nursing programs, you know, the, mm -hmm. the traditional disciplines that you see. What's distinctive about this program is showing that there's a very specific program within the hospital that's treating patients with a significant need. And our students are seeing that if they're in the exercise science program, they may be thinking that mostly they're gonna be working with athletes or the like and it's showing them that people across the lifespan, that somebody in that discipline, a student and then a professional, can serve people across the lifespan. So you said that there are other programs uh, that are going to, that are a partner with Ball uh, Memorial Hospital. So how have those programs like helped shape uh, what this program kind of looks like? So are you referring to other like, um places within the facility, like um, say the, the other rehabilitation side with physical therapy and occupational therapy. Yeah, just so with uh, rehabilitation, with physical and occupational therapy, a lot of times students cannot get that direct hands-on contact with patients. And that's no fault to the hospital at all. There's just some legal matters that that cannot happen. And for my students who think that they would like to go into those other areas, uh, the cardiopulmonary rehab, what is really important is that the students get that patient contact. They're allowed, they get checked off before they're allowed to work with a student, and so they get that patient contact. They get to work on those other transferable skills, talking, communicating, uh, time management of all the tasks that have to go on during the rehabilitation. And so students that go into cardiopulmonary rehab actually get to do those tasks, and then they can transfer those skills later if they choose to take the path of physical or occupational therapy. Not saying that students can't do their internships in those areas, because we do have students, we have a great relationship with uh, the rehabilitation unit, but um, for students who want that direct patient care, cardiopulmonary rehab really assists them with that. So. Uh, just, I just like to build relationships with people where the students can get that one-on-one -on -one contact because that's what's important really for the students to learn. And the students can find out whether this is a particular program or aspect of healthcare that they enjoy and find gratifying and so want to continue to yeah. pursue it. And I suspect that some of the students in the program will realize maybe this isn't quite for me and I'm gonna experiment with another internship mm -hmm. uh, so that I find a particular discipline uh, or aspect that is rewarding. A little like what you're doing uh, by helping to produce this program. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and I wanted to ask too, uh, how have other programs and internships helped influence and shape this partnership? Well, it's, you know, I sit and I think about it and this partnership has been built prior to me entering or coming to Ball State. So what we have done is just say, how can we get more students involved mm -hmm. in it? Because it used to just be one, two,
but there's times that we can get up to four or five students involved as well. And so I worked with the coordinator and say, how can we you know, keep more students involved? And so we bring them in as lower underclassmen, you know, those freshmen and sophomore, get them exposed to the experiences so then they can go, oh, this is what I like. And then maybe then build that up into an internship program. And so I think it, it all circles back around is the experiences that they get there. And so the other programs, yes, they all build upon one another, but creating the, the circular patterns that we have of undergraduates building into the internship um, coming from their practical experiences. And we know there's a need in our region oh. for more trained professionals yes. in this particular discipline, so it feeds that talent pipeline. No, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and President Mearns, I wanted to ask you as well, uh, with this partnership, how has uh, Ball State been helping shape it and change it on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, I think w in my experience, and Tanya, you can tell me, that this is a genuine partnership. So we identify issues that need addressing and we bring our resources together to try to address those and find solutions. So the program continues to evolve like all of our programs like that. Wonderful. And I have reached out to Katrina Reagan, the director, many times saying, where are our students' weaknesses? Where can they improve? What do we need to do in the classroom to make them better clinicians? And she always provides great feedback to me, and I can take that back to our um, coordinator of our program and make it happen. Well, thank you very much, Tanya. While students learn real world lessons from their experience in IU Health Partnership, others get a lot out of it too. Max Robson takes a look at the positive impact for patients and staff. Inside the South Tower Ball Memorial Hospital lies a cardiopulmonary rehabilitation center where Ball State students learn through experience, but they aren't the only people benefiting. With the students, when we get them, it actually gives the staff a little more time where we can interact more with the patients ourselves because we have that extra hand. As Anna Taylor and her staff get extra hands on deck, the patients get to enjoy their home away from home, making connections with the students who assist them. They become almost part of the patient's family because they know the patient's name, they ask them questions that they talked about things from the day before. As the students become a second family, they continue to learn about their future and patients. Well, they, of course, they take our stats and we feel like the, oftentimes we get to personally know them and the uh, interaction's just been great. The students' young and positive energy helps the patients enjoy their time while they work out and stay active. They've been very uplifting. Uh, we've liked the interaction with them and uh, felt they were very personable and uh, almost without exception, uh, we've appreciated very much the interaction with the, with the students. Ball Memorial Hospital staff hopes to continue these positive interactions for years to come. Max Robson, Cardinal Compass. Joining us now is Katrina Riggin, Manager of Cardiac Ancillary Services for IU Ball Memorial Health Hospital. Katrina, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. So how long have you been working at the hospital and what does cardiac ancillary mean? So I've been at IU Ball my entire career, postgraduate work. Um, it's 27 years this year. And my job title, Cardiac Ancillary Services, includes the cardiopulmonary rehab services at IU Health Ball and J hospitals, as well as I co-manage the Heart and Lung Center and our MIH Community Paramedicine Program. So I have kind of a wide community offering in the outpatient region. And how long has the uh, Cardiac Ancillary Program been running? Well, Cardiopulmonary Rehab um, has been at IU Health Ball since 1976. Dr. Wayne Gray uh, went to the Board of Directors and it was identified as a very new innovative best practice and he was able to, from a cardiology perspective, bring it to our inpatient services. So it's very long established. We are one of the largest and longest established pa uh, patient offerings in the state of Indiana. So uh, you said you've been with the program since its beginning. Katrina said that as well. What are some of the changes that you've noticed from the beginning of the program to, the, to where it is now? Like how have like day-to-day -day operations maybe changed or how has like students and staff 
how they change as well. Well, I haven't been there quite since the beginning. <laughs> Uh, the, it was established actually uh, probably about 10 years before I arrived on site um, and I had a really strong foundation to work with with students um, because I actually was a graduate student who came from Ball State to the program at Ball and that's how I was introduced there myself. So I kind of came through the pipeline as well. Um, but one thing that we always have built on is that the students that come are part of our team. They're not really identified as a student, you know, all the time. We have them introduce themselves to all of our patients and caregivers, just like they're a member of our full-fledged staffing team. And we have competencies and expectations that I think allow them to just really dig in and grow and do the work. Um, kind of in my early years, internships were a lot of like making copies and helping with the behind the scenes successes. And I would say that's something that our students do very little of um, because we've really progressed to having them be the front line to work with um, everybody that comes in contact with our patients. And, and it really helps keep us academically innovative. Now, how specifically does this program help the day-to-day -day activities of staff members in the hospital? Oh, our staff enjoy the students. I think that is key in our long-term relationship is that they know the Ball State calendar as well as you guys do. <laughs> 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 because we know that we have weeks where we will not have student, students coming in and they really spread the work, right? The, ha the extra hands and that interface with, with individuals is so important and it's so encouraging and so motivating. And so um, we definitely miss the times that we do not have students interacting with our patients. Yeah, and Katrina, I'd be interested if I can say, why don't you share with us how the students actually help you and your teammates mm -hmm. produce better outcomes for mm -hmm. the patients that you're serving? Well, so imagine yourself uh, just coming out of the hospital after having a heart attack, and you're coming in, and we're going to help you exercise. And maybe that's not something that you were doing actively before your heart attack, right? So you're already a little anxious about your current health state, but you're also very anxious about adopting new lifestyles and it's lots of information and it's it's a really big need of education and so if you can have somebody who's kind of with you and doing one-on-one -on -one work for a couple of minutes um, at, at the side of the machine that makes your time go faster it's more enjoyable you get to know people on a personal level and it helps with build that accountability right we have less absences because they know people will miss them Mm -hmm. um, all of these, these personal touches that our services can do are envied by other programs in the state. Um, I attend, I'm on the board of directors for cardiopulmonary rehab across the state of Indiana, and we are known very well for the relationship that we've had with Ball State and the students that come to us. Yeah. So this culminary, uh, oh, I'm so sorry. Cardiopulmonary Rehabilitation Program is the seventh ever to win the Outstanding Local Partnership Award. Uh, and that was back in May, I believe. What does it mean to both the university as well as the hospital to win that award? Well, maybe I'll set it up. You know, at our university, we have hundreds of partnerships across the community, and we are proud of those relationships to be a community-engaged institution. So for this program to be selected as the most prominent program in a year, is really important. It's important to us, and I suspect it's important to you and your colleagues. Oh, yes, we were. Well, we were very surprised when Tanya approached us about the application. Um, at that time, we, we did a little back work. You know, we wanted to look back, and one of the things that we realized is since 2005, we've employed just under 40 students out of this program. So we really felt like that was exciting to us to have the opportunity to use this award to look back and celebrate, but also to look forward and know that it's really making a true contribution. Um, everybody from Dr. Bird to Dr. Gray, uh, everybody attended the ceremony. We were ecstatic at being selected. Yeah. And how much work does the university do uh, when it comes to scheduling and getting students involved uh, with the hospital itself? Well, Tanya's colleagues in our College of Health do a lot of work to collaborate, to create the program and to ensure that the schedules of our student experiences align with the needs of the program. So it takes a lot of planning and preparation to execute it smoothly so that it benefits the patients, the staff at Ball Memorial, and, and our students and faculty. 
And uh, what other kinds of opportunities do you hope that students and staff, as well as the patients, I suppose, can get out of this partnership and hopefully uh, more partnerships in the future? Well, I think one thing uh, Tanya kind of hit on earlier is that when students go into exercise science, there's a very broad application of that degree. Uh, and so when I used to come over to the university to the lectures to kind of introduce the concepts of cardiopulmonary rehab, it was really kind of a first touching point. Mm -hmm. uh, because we do see a very specialized subset of cardiovascular and pulmonary patients. And so it's not, it's not like nursing, it's not like some of the other degrees that are very well known. Um, and so we just really want to continue to invite people into the space. Um, but we do have students who end up seeing very good observations in sonography. They go to the cath lab. They'll go out with our community paramedics. And they see all these different applications in healthcare. And sometimes I consider it just as big a win if they find their space in one of those entities, mm -hmm. right? That we're, we're about letting you try it on. And, and as President uh, Mern said earlier, sometimes it's, it's an obvious misfit. It is not at all what they thought it was going to be, but that's part of the learning process. And so there's just nothing wrong with that. Katrina, thank you so much for joining us, but I'm afraid that's all the time we have there. President Mearns, we would like to give you the last bit of this portion to reflect on this conversation and what your final thoughts are. Thank you. So first of all, Katrina, we're grateful to you and your colleagues at Ball Memorial for providing these opportunities for our students mm -hmm. and uh, grateful to you for giving us the opportunity to share, uh, to share this with the audience today. Um, you know, Ball State and Ball Memorial Hospital, we're probably two of the most important assets uh, here in East Central Indiana. And when we work together in partnership like that, we know it benefits our students and it benefits uh, the patients that we're all serving to benefits our friends and neighbors. And it proves once again that when we work together in partnership, we truly are better together. So thank you. Thank you very much, President Mearns. I'm Colin Marith. And I'm Oliver Moster. Make sure to join us next time for Cardinal Compass, Campus and Community Conversations. At Ball State University, we welcome you as a learning partner from day one. Our students bring creativity and determination to each aspect of the learning experience, from the classroom to the community. At Ball State, we help students turn an emerging passion into an enduring purpose. Our beautiful campus, welcoming environment, immersive learning, and collaborative culture provide the ideal place for you to pursue your journey to a fulfilling career and a meaningful life. We fly. Are you ready to fly?